Ghostbusters is a licensed game by Activision based on the movie of the same name. It was designed by David Crane, produced by Brad Freger, and released for several home computer platforms in 1984, and later for video game console systems, including the Atari 2600, Sega Master System and NES. The programmer for the initial version of the game was Adam Bellin. Gameplay. The player sets up a ghost-busting franchise in a city with a rising psychokinetic PK energy level and has the ability to purchase equipment such as traps, or to upgrade their vehicle. The player then negotiates a grid representing the city. They need to stop the roamers from reaching the Temple of Zul, which causes the PK energy level to jump. When the player moves to a city block that is flashing red, the game mode switches to an overhead view of the player's vehicle driving to the location. The player must move left and right to vacuum up the stray ghosts and avoid cars. The player then moves to a screen in which a Slimer ghost must be guided with two proton streams over a ghost trap. If the ghost is successfully captured, the player's income increases. The aim is to have $10,000 by the time the city's PK level reaches 9,999, wherein the Stay Puff Marshmallow Man will appear and wreak havoc on the city, thereby ending the game. In some versions, e.g. the Commodore 64 version, after the first successful game, the player is given an account number, which stores the amount of money the player had at the end of the game. This allowed for purchasing more expensive items for use, faster cars, more traps etc. In order to win at these games the player was required to have earned more money than their initial account balance. This is one of the earliest uses of passwords being used as a save game feature on home computers. Topic. Speech samples Some ports of the game especially the ZX Spectrum and the Commodore 64 version are significant for their attempt at playing back rudimentary speech samples. Ghostbusters. He slimed me. A novelty at the time. The Commodore 64 version was noted for having the best synthesized speech and music, with a very good representation of the Ghostbusters theme song used as background music. Topic. Reception Antic in May 1985 called Ghostbusters, "...the first adaptation to capture both the feel and the theme of the movie on which it is based most enjoyable to play." Edge in 2007 called Ghostbusters, "...dauntingly good," noting that despite the action sequences expected of a licensed title, the game was a "...polished, intelligently paced." Strategic business simulation. Ernie Hudson said, My kids really hated the Commodore 64 game. They thought it sucked. In 1985 it and the print shop were reportedly the two most widely pirated Commodore 64 programs. Two computing listed Ghostbusters 8th on the magazine's list of top Apple second games as of late 1985, based on sales and market share data, and it was Activision's best selling Commodore game as of late 1987. The Amstrad CPC and ZX Spectrum versions of the game was included on the 1986 compilation They Sold a Million Three, along with Fighter Pilot, Rambo, and Kung Fu Master. The game was also released on the Story So Far Vol. 4 in December 1989, and Hollywood Collection in December 1990. It knocked Daily Thompson's Decathlon from the top of the UK Spectrum sales chart. The NES version was created in association with Works, later changed their name to Bits Laboratory. This version was panned by critics, gamers, and fans alike for its monotonous gameplay, sloppy controls, and lack of connection to the original film. An enhanced remake of the Spectrum version was released as freeware for the PC in 2006. Topic: <inaudible> <inaudible> Nintendo Entertainment System version. The game was also released on the Nintendo Entertainment System in 1988, 1986 in Japan, and the Sega Master System in 1987. These versions featured added gameplay after the Ghostbusters sneak by the Marshmallow Man. It played more like a conventional vertical scrolling platform game, where they were to actually climb the stairs to get to the roof. 
However, in the NES version, the Ghostbusters could not fire their weapons nor trap any of the ghosts and had to instead sneak by all the floors. In contrast, in the Master System version, the Ghostbusters are able to shoot the ghosts with their proton streams to temporarily make them go away. The NES version is considered more difficult for this reason. At the end of the NES version, the final screen states, Congratulation! Sick! You have completed a great game! And proved sick the justice of our culture. Now go and rest our heroes. Topic <inaudible> Remake An enhanced remake of the Spectrum version was released as freeware for PCs in 2006. 